Mel, some other concepts with regard to insurance. The term over insurance, what does that mean? Okay, so there's, you get over insurance and you get under insurance. So when you are insuring anything, whether it is a home, a building, a vehicle, um, you can possibly insure it for more than what it will actually cost. So if you bought a vehicle for 500,000 Rand for argument's sake, um, if you decide that you want to insure it for a little bit more, uh, when you have to replace it, uh, it will become a bit costly. Yeah. Yeah, I think they also do it for devious means. Yes. Over insurance is often done with bad intentions because what you actually want to do, you want to make a profit out of insurance. Yes. Now, the general rule is you cannot make a profit out of insurance. Correct. So, when a business over insure, that means they insure the asset for more than the market value, it means they pay a higher premium. Yes. With the intention of when they do claim one day, if they do claim, they're going to claim for more than the market value. Now, in that case, the insurance company won't pay you out more than the market value. So you're actually losing money. Generally, insurance companies stick to the market value. You're correct. Yeah. So. And so under insurance is quite the opposite. It's when you actually insure something for less than what the replacement cost would be. So for argument's sake, if we took a house and if we bought the house for two million, is that the price of a house nowadays? It can be, depending on area. Depends wow. where you want to buy. But let's say you buy in a standard area, a fairly new standard area, and you buy the house for 2 million rand. Can I just say, I paid 50,000 rand for my house. So, <laughs> is that area not standard? It doesn't matter where your area is. It depends. It's just area bound. Okay. So, if we decided to insure that house for 1.8 million rand, we would be insuring it for less than what we actually bought it for, which means that we would be under-insuring it. And the intention there is with under-insurance to pay a lesser premium. Yes. But now the problem there is that if you claim one day, yeah. then they won't pay you out the actual value of your damage. Thank but we'll come to that later on. Yeah, that's correct. Now the term reinstatement. Now learners, please, business studies, all these topics has got a language of its own and educators you need to test the learners on these concepts let them write the test um, let them study it and then um, test the not just the general knowledge but the business language knowledge of the subject and so they can know the terminology now the reinstatement what okay. does it mean so reinstatement is about the replacement of damage or stolen goods instead of paying an amount to the insurer so what this means is, is if I had a very good phone, let's use my phone as an example, I have a Samsung phone, and if anything happened to that phone, if it was damaged or stolen, instead of being given the money to go and buy another phone, the insurance company would give me back exactly the same kind of phone. Okay. Okay, so I think we can explain it by means of an example. Okay, we don't have an example there, but we'll come to that one. So, if you lose your Samsung 2, you can't claim a Samsung 7. That's correct. Okay, so you will be given the same okay. one. Good. Mel, some other concepts. Oh, but those were the concepts. Insurance has got some principles yeah. that are applied when claims are being made and when claims are being paid out. And... Linus, you've got to know the four concepts or the four principles, and it's called the average clause, indemnity. Then we have insurable interest and the principle of utmost good faith. Okay, so let's start with the average clause. Melanie, what does that entail? So when we're talking about the average clause, it simply means that there will be a payment of the insurance claim according to the amount of the insured. It is applicable when the insured has underinsured the asset and the asset was not insured at its full value. Okay. Okay. Then they employ the average clause principle. 
Okay, and we're going to so, come to a calculation later on based on the average clause principle. Okay. Melanie, we've had a question here from um, Lutando, and the question is what happens if the business over-insure? I think we, we've clarified we it, that. but don't you just want to go over that again? When a business over-insures, what happens? Um, Lisa, when a business over-insures, they pay a higher premium, first of all, because the intention is not for them to make a profit. Mm. Um, so they will pay the higher premium. And, and also they insure the building or the asset? For more than what it is actually worth. The market value. Yes. Okay, great stuff. Okay, that was the average clause. The, now, can we just use an example here for the average clause? And I think you alluded to it earlier. Yes. But maybe we can just um, clarify it. And uh, this could be the house that you bought recently <laughs> for 10 million. So now the, board, the asset, or it could be anything, but let's assume it's a house being bought for 10 million, but it's only insured for 8 million. And so you can already see we've got under insurance of 2 million. That's correct. Okay. But initially, that's not a problem. The problem only arises when there's a claim. For example, there's a fire. Or any kind of damage that occurs. Or any kind of damage that occurs. And so, remember you bought it for 10 million? And you insured it for 8? You insured it for 8. And the damage of that fire is four estimated million. at four million. So the million dollar question now is how much money will the insurance company pay the homeowner? Yeah. And remember, his damage is four million. Yes. Is he going to get the four million? What the insurance will do is they will apply the average clause principle. And so in order to apply that principle, Melanie, there is a formula that they use. Linus, now, if you want to do this calculation correct, you must know this formula. They're not going to give it to you. By the way, if you do write it down, you might even get two marks for it. And so what does this formula state? It says quite clearly, the insured amount you take and you divide it by the market value of the asset, and then you multiply it with the value of the damage. So let's plug in the numbers for them quickly, Lisa. Okay. So the insured value. Okay. So let's let's just go through it quickly. Okay. The insured value now is. Would be. So we basically we are substituting now. Yes. So once you've got your formula, we can substitute the information that you have available. That's correct. Okay. So Melanie, what do you say? So the uh, insured value is eight million. The insured value is eight million. So we're going to write eight, eight million, million there. Million. And then we bought the property at market value for 10 million. And so we're going so to write 10, 10 million, million there. there. And, and the then multiply. Multiplied by the damage incurred by the fire, which was 4 million. 4 million. Okay, so let's see quickly what happens if we do that. Okay, so here's your 8 million. There's your 10 million. Divided by your 10 million. Times your 4 million, yeah. which was the damage. That's correct. And so ultimately, the insurance company is only going to pay out 3.2 million. million. Correct. Remember your damage was 4 million, eh? But because you're underinsured, the insurance company is not going to pay you the full value of your damage. What is the moral of the story? Don't underinsure. And how do you make sure that you don't underinsure? Make sure that you have the value of your assets evaluated annually. And take into consideration also the inflation rate. And it's also important for companies to do that annually um, because it, it then goes into the projected um, cash flow statement for the okay. following year. For the following year. And now we had an answer here from Ilam. Yes. Ilam said. What does Ilam say? Okay, 3.2 million. Oh, All the Ilam, you must just please indicate which school you're from. I see there are quite a few learners from, I think it's Atlanta Secondary, Peakview Secondary, I think Rosendahl is also tuned in, Rangeville. Now, earlier I greeted the learners and teachers from the Western Cape, but Rangeville is in Kuruman. Yes. So that's Northern Cape. And so we want to welcome learners and teachers from the Northern Cape also. 